Welcome back to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to cut out anything from its background. Hey there, and welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flearn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's episode, we're using a very special tool called the Pen Tool. It's literally the key to cutting out anything. So we've got a really fun little Christmassy type episode here. As long as you follow along with this episode and learn how to use a pen tool, you can cut out anything from its background. We got a great tutorial. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our image for today. You can actually download this and follow along. Just click on the link right down below. Now, the reason I chose this image, other than the fact that it's a super fun and a holiday festive, is that these gingerbread men are relatively difficult to cut out of their background. For instance, if I try to use like the magnetic lasso tool, uh, I can click right here, but it's gonna get kind of caught up between the differences between the white. You can see it's like following the white line there, but I want it to be on the brown line uh, on the outside of them, but it, it's a little bit tricky, okay? So it's that tool is not gonna do uh, a wonderful job. My more automatic tools like the quick selection tool, this is maybe gonna do a good job inside, but when I wanna go ahead and select outside the white area, okay, this is looking good, but then I gotta get this little brown area around here too, and you can see it's it's not really doing that well. It's, it's jumping up here and then I gotta minus this out and there we go. I'm, I'm just not getting a great uh, <laughs> not getting great results from this. So anytime you run into a situation where your automatic tools like the magic wand or quick select, these tools don't work for you, I highly recommend using the pen tool. It's fantastic. Now, tomorrow we're gonna show you how to, how to cut out hair because hair is a little bit of a different story, but anything with a like solid edge, you can use the pen tool. So let's go ahead and show you how to use it. It's one of my favorite tools. So let's go ahead and zoom in. We're gonna go, we're gonna cut this one out of the background here so we can zoom way in. Now I got a couple of tips that are gonna help you use the pen tool. So go ahead and grab your pen tool. Now up with, here at the top, you wanna make sure it says path. So you're gonna create a pen path, okay? Now we have some little settings here. Uh, your path options, I recommend bumping up your thickness a little bit. I like to use a three pixel thickness. And then this little option for rubber band helps you to see what you're about to create, okay? So it's a little bit predictive of where the pen path is gonna go, okay? And then this auto add and delete, I recommend having that checked and we'll show you what that does in a second. Okay, so basically here's the idea with the pen path. If you click a couple times, there we go, like I'm just clicking around my image, it just makes straight lines between wherever you click, okay? Make a little crown for my guy here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up by going back to my original space. You can see a little O next to your cursor. Go ahead and click there, and then you've created your first pen path. Now your paths are stored in your path dialog. I have my path dialog right here. If you don't see your path dialog, you can go to window and down to paths. Just make sure that's checked. So it always saves your pen path as a work path. Okay, that's the default and you wanna go ahead and give it a name. So let's just double click where it says uh, work path, and I'm gonna call this crown, and that gives it a name. That way if I create a new path, each of them is named, okay? I don't wanna just have it re-save over my work path every time. So now that I've created a path, if I wanna turn this path into a selection, I can either hold control or command and click right here on the thumbnail of that path, okay? Or I can click on this little circle with a bunch of dots in it. There we go, and that turns that into a selection too. So now that we have a selection, we could paint in this selection if we wanted to, we could use this selection on a layer mask to cut objects out. There's so many wonderful things you can do with selections. So that's the whole idea. We create a path, we turn it into a selection, and then we load that into a layer mask to cut the object out. So right now, yes, uh, we have a very simple path that's just a bunch of little dots. I know it's not that fancy, but let's go ahead and show you some of the benefits of the path tool. So I've already made this pen path, but I have the ability to change this path at any time. So let's just say it's gone, like you don't see it, right? So how do you get back to it? You go back to your paths and then click on it, and then you'll see this like blue outline. Now, if I wanna change this, hold control or command, and then click on your pen path, and then continue holding control or command, and you can see each one of these little dots at the ends here 
it's going to turn blue. So if that turns blue and I click and drag it, look at this, I can move this around. Okay, I can move this around, I can move this around. So I'm like, okay, my path wasn't exactly how I wanted it before. Let me just continue to make some upgrades to my crown. Check it out. Now, if you want to remove one of these points, just hover over it and click. That's this auto add delete, right? So hover over it and click and it just removes it. Now, if I want to add one, I'm not holding control or command here. If I want to add a point, just hover over anywhere on this path and click again and you'll add a point. Now that point I added actually had some curvature in it. So let's go ahead and show you how to create a path with curvature. Now I'm going to click on the plus icon and we're going to start creating a path with curvature. So earlier what I was doing is just clicking and that's a path with straight lines. Now, if I want a curvature in there, I click and I drag out. There we go. And look at this, I've got a curve. Now, if I click and drag out again, you can see these lines here, this one and this one, that's kind of pulling that curve up in that direction. So now you can see this line here is pulling that in that direction. So anywhere I go, that line is pulling my path in that direction. So I'm gonna click another one here and drag that. There we go. And you can see this is pulling that up in that direction. Click here and drag that. Click here and drag in that direction. There we go. And as I continue to do this, now I'm creating really nice curves. There we go. And go ahead and close that out. Now, I can edit this at any time too. Just hold control or command and go ahead and click on any one of these points and you can move these curves at any time. There we go. So just like my straight lines and my angles, I can move these curves at any point. I can also click on these little controls and change how they push and pull the path. Okay, so just control or command, push and pull on these. And it's always gonna try to make a continuous curve. It's not trying to create like a point there. Now, let's say you did wanna make a point right here in the middle of your curve. All you have to do is hold Alt or Option and click on one of your arms and drag it out. There we go. Let's do it again here and drag it out. So now let's go ahead and look at our path. Now our path looks like this. It comes to a point and then curves around, comes to a point and curves around again. Let's hold control or command and click on this again. And now I'm gonna hold alt or option and click right on the central po center point and go ahead and turn it back into a continuous curve. So if I hold alt or option and click on my main points here, just click on all of them, look what's happening. It's taking the curvature out of these, okay? We're just going back to a bunch of straight lines at this point. But again, hold Alt or Option and click and drag out. Boom, and there we go. We've got curvature, okay? On any one of these points. And we can go ahead and just move all these around. And don't forget, you can always hold Control or Command and just move a whole point if you want. And then maybe change it to where it looks like this. So pen paths are always editable. And that's the beauty of them because you wanna basically use these to trace around objects. And sometimes you don't do a perfect job, but instead of like saying, oh, I gotta start over, you just go back and edit the path a little bit. So now that we know how to do it, let's go ahead. Uh, we're gonna click off of our path. We're gonna make a new path here. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and name it gingerbread. There we go. And we're gonna start tracing around our gingerbread man. So again, with our pen tool active, we're just gonna click and drag out in this direction. I'm gonna walk you through it, so don't worry about it. Uh, I'm gonna tell you everything that I hold. So if I hold control or command or alt or option or anything, I'm gonna tell you. So right now we're just clicking and dragging. So just click and drag, there we go. And you can see I have a little preview of what I'm gonna make. That's this option right here that says rubber band, okay? That's this where I see a preview. So we're just gonna come right down here and click and drag up in that direction. There we go. Click and drag in that direction. Now I've got a little curve in here, right? So I wanna click at the beginning of the curve. There we go. Click at the end of the curve. And I'm gonna hold space bar down. That's gonna allow me to move around. There we go. And go ahead and click there and move this around and Fantastic. So that came to a little point. You can see there actually is a little point where the ginger man, gingerbread stops. Actually, I was wrong. When I zoom in a little bit more, you can still see the gingerbread cookie. So I was gonna make a point, but again, hold control or command, and you can just move this back. 
there we go and continue along making your gingerbread man so just there we go clicking and dragging here i'm gonna hold space bar to move this a little bit so i can see better there we go click and drag click and drag space bar now you can be as accurate as you want i'm actually going to go inside of this little area and come back out so we'll just click here okay there we go See, I'm making smaller points that are closer together, and that's helping me follow along this smaller little area. Hold spacebar, click and drag. There we go. Or you can decide to smooth some of these areas out if you want to. I mean, I'm super zoomed in. I'm like a thousand percent zoomed in. So, you know, you don't have to get every little thing perfect. Now, if I want to move any of these points around, just hold control or command and click on them. Okay, and move them around. Fantastic, so I'm just going right here around this edge. Good deal. It's kind of hard to see, but our gingerbread person does continue right around here. All right, now let's say I do a couple points where I'm like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> If you hit Option Command Z, it will undo. So you can just do regular undo and go back to where you were before, okay? Or if you create a point out there and then the rest of it looks good, again, you can just simply hold Control or Command and bring that in. But this one is actually a point. So if I hold Alt or Option, click and drag that out, look at that, I can just make it back to how I want. Then Control or Command and put it right back in there. Or if I decide I don't even need it, just hover over it click and then it's gone. There we go. Fantastic. So if you ever are editing a path and then you accidentally click out of here and you're no longer editing the path, no worries. Just hold control or command, click on the path so you can see these white dots and then go to the last path you made and you're going to see right next to your little uh, pen icon, you have an icon that looks like a, a square with two lines coming out of it. Boop. That'll allow you to continue. So go ahead and click right there. And now we're going to continue on with our pen path. All right. So here we're going to run into an angle, right? Boom. We run into an angle. So at the angle, I don't click and drag. Let's just do that again so you can see. Okay. So we're going to click right here. And instead of clicking and dragging, I'm just going to click because I want this to be an angle. Click there. And now we start our new direction with a click and drag. Okay, in this case, I need to pull this in a little bit. So I just hold control or command and pull that in a little bit. There we go. I'm going to follow around the bottom of this. And it looks like the cookie continues to go around this way. I'm getting kind of hungry doing this. All right. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and click off of there. Uh, I can go to my layers for instance, and grab a curves adjustment layer and just make the whole image brighter. See how this helps me to like figure out where I need my pen path. You can just turn this off later, but it's nice to have that on like while you're actually working. I could have had it on earlier, but we're doing pretty well. So again, I need to reactivate my path, right? I've done pretty well, but I need to reactivate it. So what I'm going to do, hold control or command and click on this path, then go to my very end point. I see the square with two lines sticking out. Click there again, and now I'm reactivated on the same path. All right, now I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So at this point, I could go in here and fix this stuff, right? Like this is not exactly what I want, so I can go in here, hold Control or Command, and I can basically, oh, see, look at that big area that I missed right there. So if I hold Control or Command, I can simply move these points out, okay? We're like, oh, you know what? This actually was. There we go. Look at that. Looking good. Okay. So now we have a much better control of what our cookie looks like. All right. Holding the space bar and going right back around there. Control or command. There we go. I'm going to go to that little point there. All right. And then I'm going to follow the white frosting. All right, so of course we're doing a cookie in this example, but this could literally be anything. 
There we go. Because you're manually tracing it out, right? So we can start to see a bit of the cookie here. There we go. Let's click and drag. I'm going to hold control or command and pull that down in that direction. Okay. There we go. Pull it out in that direction. See how I was able to conquer that big area with just two points? Fantastic. So if you have a just a big simple curve, you want to use as few points as possible. Fantastic. Click and drag right up there. Now here again, I could choose to include all this extra little bits around, or I could smooth it out. Like I can just create a nice smooth gingerbread man that looks like he doesn't have any bits hanging off the sides of his head. There we go. And I can go back to my original one and click and drag out just like this. So we have the option. Do I want to include that little, you know, point up there at the top? If I do, just hover right over here and go ahead and add, right? Hold Alt or Option because this kind of comes to a point. And then we can just bring that down. Or let's just undo that. Or I can smooth it out intentionally. So we have a little bit more of a smooth shape around our gingerbread man. Okay, look at this. And if I need to add any more points here, like if I wasn't, you know, detailed enough, I can come here, click the little plus icon. There we go. And we're adding some points here. There we go. And let's go ahead and zoom out. So I have a lot of control over how I cut this out. And it's the most precise way to do this. Now it's time to turn this into a selection. So it's easy to do with your pen tool. Just right click and go down to make selection. And you can even feather it if you want. But in this case, we're not going to feather it. So let's hit OK. Cool. Well, we have a really nice selection of our gingerbread person. Let's go ahead and here on my background layer, I'm just going to click on my layer mask. Boom, and look at that, they're cut out from the background. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is invert my layer mask because I want just my gingerbread person to show up. So let's hit Control or Command I to invert. And now we can just choose a background. So I'm gonna choose a solid color background. I'm gonna go with like a light purple here. Boom, and there we go. Let's go with a little darker purple. Fantastic. Actually, like maybe a teal looks good. Yeah, I think that actually looks pretty nice. A little bit of a teal background. Cute. So our gingerbread person, look at this. They're perfectly cut out from their background. And since we're just using layer masks in this case, I can hold shift and click on my layer mask and enable or disable that at any point in time. Now, of course, I can make some copies of this one. I'm gonna actually hold Controller Command and click on the layer mask. And then on my layer, I'm gonna hit Controller Command J and that's just gonna duplicate this guy. Look at that. Boom. So I can duplicate this and then I've got this guy on a new layer. So if I wanted to like do an animation and make them dance, I could do that because they're all just on blank layers or stack them up. And then obviously if you were gonna like make an animation or a, a card or something like that, my recommendation would be to cut a couple of these out and then maybe duplicate those. So it will look a little bit less like, hey, it's the same one over and over again. But you get the idea. We did the work cutting one out and then we can put this anywhere we want, make some kind of fun graphics and we're good to go. So I promise if you can follow along cutting out this gingerbread, then you can cut out anything that has a solid edge in Photoshop. Now. Tomorrow, we're going to show you how to cut out hair from the background because it's a different story. It doesn't have a solid edge. It's just a bunch of little, you know, hairs and things like that. So stay tuned for tomorrow. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to join 30 Days of Photoshop. It's almost up. Woo! We're having an absolute blast. It's free. Go ahead and click the link right down below. You get all the sample images so you can follow along as well as bonus goodies that are only available here as a part of this totally free series. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.